I want to be as clear as I can up front. Most of what I'm saying in this video is very subjective, and I'm not trying to say any program is better than another. These are just my opinions, and I've never been paid, incentivized, or even asked to say any of this or promote anything I'm mentioning. I took most of the week off, so I have nothing new to show on Cargo Defense, but I got an idea from the Discord chat for something else to talk about. This week I'm going to run through the software I use to do most of my work. First off, if you've watched any of my past vlogs, you already know I'm using Godot. Since I already made a video about why I chose it over other engines, I won't rehash that here, but five months later I still think it was a good choice. For the C++ side of things, I'm using Visual Studio. IntelliSense gives me better tooltip information and completion suggestions than anything else I've used, although to be fair, I haven't tried many other things that try to do what IntelliSense does. It's also got pretty comprehensive debugging tools. Not as hardcore as WinDBG, but I haven't had to go that deep in a long time. When I'm not doing C++, I tend to code in Sublime Text 3. It's deeply configurable, and there's already a plugin for GDScript syntax highlighting. In fact, the main reason I started using Sublime was I was able to add syntax highlighting rules for my own scripting language for a past game project. I've written a plugin for it too, in Python. I don't even know Python, but GDScript is similar enough that I was able to figure out the basics pretty quickly. Sublime's autocomplete suggestions aren't as context-aware as IntelliSense, but they're still helpful. And honestly, I just like how it looks. It's definitely a lot less cluttered than Visual Studio. I used to use Notepad++, and I still do sometimes for diffing files, but it's not cross-platform, and I increasingly value being able to use the same tools everywhere. But now let's talk about what I use for making these videos. I start by recording narration in Reason 10. It's really overkill for this, but I spend a lot of time using Reason for music, so it's what I'm most familiar with for audio editing and processing. You could do pretty much the same thing with free software like Audacity, or Wavisaur if you got some free VST plugins, but it would take me some time to get familiar with them, and I just don't have a reason to. Whatever software you use, a little processing can make a big difference. This is what I sound like unprocessed. Yeah, let's turn those effects back on. And if you're curious about the hardware side, lately I'm using an Audio-Technica AT2050 plugged into an M-Audio M-Track 8x4M. On occasion I've used an AKG C214 plugged into a Focusrite ISA1, but I feel like subjectively the AT2050 is better for spoken word with my voice. Of course, different voices will get along better with different microphones, but any decent large diaphragm condenser mic will probably sound fine with some post-processing if you're not an extreme audiophile. When it comes to the visuals, I do a lot of screen recording with OBS Studio. For a free tool, this is awesome. Maybe not the most intuitive thing ever, but impressively flexible. I don't need most of its features because I'm not doing live streaming, but it's easy enough to just record a window or a screen region to a file, and I have way fewer problems with the resulting video than I did with Fraps. The only thing that frustrates me is this positioning view. When I want to record a region of my screen, I stretch out the display capture source until just the part I want is in frame, but I can't pan or zoom this view so I can only stretch it within the bounds of this area. I can kind of work around this by stretching the OBS window to extreme aspect ratios, but it's just annoying. When I'm not recording video, I do a lot of diagrams and edited screenshots of code. Most of that is done in Paint.net, which I use for just about every image editing task, and sometimes pixel art. It's not the most powerful thing ever, but it's free, lightweight, and pretty intuitive. Definitely a lot easier for me to figure out than GIMP or Photoshop. I can do layering with different blend modes, draw shapes, generate noise textures, and turn off anti-aliasing or smooth rescaling when I want harsh pixelation. However, if I want to do more serious artwork, I turn to ArtRage. Not to say I'm a serious artist to begin with, but ArtRage has a lot of great tools. It works really well with my Cintiq, and it's really intuitive and easy to use. It's not free, but at $80 I think it's totally worth it if you want a program that simulates traditional media. I've also been using slideshows a lot lately because it's just an easier way to lay out information on a screen. I've been using Google Slides for this mostly. I tried Keynote on my MacBook for a video or two, but despite the relative slowness of web-based apps, I just found Google Slides easier to use. PowerPoint would probably be even better for this, but it's not worth the price to me right now. For most of my editing, I use Vegas Pro 14 Edit Steam Edition, and I hate it. I hate it. There's a newer version available now, but there's no way I'm paying money for an upgrade. This software has crashed on me so many times, I can just about guarantee it will crash at least once during the making of this video. I've submitted dozens of crash reports, pleaded with them to fix it and get in touch if there's anything I can do to help reproduce the issue, but no. It's been years, and if they don't care to fix the software I paid hundreds of dollars for, they're not getting another dollar out of me. To be fair, when it's not crashing, its interface is more intuitive to me than other video editors I've tried. And it's got all the tools you need to do quite a lot, like animating movement of multiple layers of video, freezing and changing playback rate with a curve, etc. Although it has plenty of bafflingly frustrating elements, like who decided this was the best way to position text on a screen? I could go on with minor complaints, but one way or another, Vegas is constantly annoying me. It's just been hard to switch because everything else I've found with its level of capability is either expensive or really confusing to a newcomer like me. I'm going to spend some more time exploring other options, and I'll probably have a follow-up video later on. I think that covers just about everything I use for everything you've seen on this channel. If I've left out something you're curious about, feel free to leave a comment or join us on Discord. Meanwhile, it always helps if you hit the like button, spread the word, and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching. And it's rather stormy outside.